Well, welcome to today's webinar. It's a brief introduction to the Lutheran Service Builder. Glad to have everyone here with us. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with everything. My name is Dave Farnham, and I am a sales representative here with Concordia Technology Solutions. So I'm certainly glad that you have joined us today and taken time out of your schedule. If for some reason you don't see or don't hear anything um, uh, during the webinar here, just shoot off something or a question in the uh, question box or the chat area. I'd be glad to make sure that everything is, is going correctly uh, as far as the uh, sound, uh, the audio and the video. So. You'll see, again, my information in front of you. Also joining me today is Ken Olemeyer. Now, Ken is a senior manager, uh, marketing manager here at Concordia Publishing House, has a really unique role as a marketer, and I'll let him talk to that uh, a little bit uh, a little bit later as we get into it. And Ken's going to be the one that's going to walk us through the Lutheran Service Builder and kind of navigate through that. A few things to keep in mind for us in regards to the housekeeping uh, items for today's webinar. It'll be approximately 50 minutes for presentation. It really may be less than that, uh, honestly. Uh, and about 10 minutes for questions uh, at the end. You can certainly ask questions in the question box uh, and uh, you can do that anytime throughout the webinar. I'll be the one that will be answering that, so certainly feel free to pop in a question there if you'd like. Um, and uh, some of the questions that you know you may ask, it might be covered really as we get into the webinar. The recording will be shared, so for those of you that are wondering, wow, I wish I could see this a little bit later, you can certainly do that. Uh, and for those that maybe signed up but weren't able to attend, it's the same thing true with that. We will email you a link so that you can watch this at a later time. But we do thank you for joining us here today, and we are certainly glad to have you. So Lutheran Service Builder, well, what, what is it actually? Lutheran Service Builder is a web-based program that's going to allow any church to quickly and easily plan your service create custom bulletins uh, and export your presentations and playlists and conform with copyright requirements. So that is that's basically in a nutshell what it is. A fantastic tool, um, as you will see here too, to really assist you in worship planning. So the the top header that you'll see here moving online, what does that mean? Well, Lutheran Service Builder is online, but for a number of years, it was a Windows PC-based software. And with that, uh, it, it kind of limited itself into those that had to have a Windows-based uh, software. They had to have Windows-based um, PC, and there were a number of churches sometimes that used the older version and had to keep a laptop, um, uh, a Windows laptop around to use it. Right now, since we are on the cloud and it's web-based, it's available for any Mac user. So I know a lot of people are very, very happy about that. Now you can also access it from any type of device. So if you have a laptop, a desktop, a tablet, you can even access it from your phone. Uh, also, uh, this allows you now to be able to use Lutheran Service Builder and have multiple users logging into the same account online and working together really in a team. Before, it was just installed on one computer and each installation at a church, it was on a separate computer. Now you're really working together as a team. So this is even a much better environment, we feel. And any updates that we give, automatically are going to take place and so that you don't have to do the updates there locally and you don't have to worry about something not being compatible or something like that and running into issues like that. Just merely log in. You've got everything that you need um, at your disposal. Now, a few assumptions that we'll have today as we go into our webinar, um, and that is we, we're going to you know, have a basic understanding that you probably know some of the basics of liturgy. Also, that you're probably new to the online Lutheran Service Builder. Maybe you have absolutely no experience with it, and that's fine. That's kind of the assumption that we're taking is that you're brand new to it. We're going to be an overview, and it's going to be um, an introduction. So some of you may have a subscription already, or you've just started a free trial. 
So you can start a free trial if you haven't done so um, by just going to lutheranservicebuilder.com and clicking on the button that says start free trial. It's as simple as that. It doesn't cost any money to have the trial. Um, there is no expiration date on that either. So you can have the trial and use it as often or as long as you need it with the trial. Um, but there are some limitations with the trial. Without having the subscription, you merely are, you, you cannot either, either print or export from the trial, but you can fully use the software and develop worship services to see exactly what they would look like. Um, and there's no type of limitation there. You just merely can't print or export or copy paste from the software. So we're gonna take a little bit here. We're gonna put a couple different maybe poll questions that you'll see on your, on, on your screen and on the go to webinar uh, little window, you'll be able to answer that. So let's take a look at that and see what, um, what particular questions that we have. And if you'll answer those, tells you a little bit more about, um, a little bit more about yourself here. All right, and bear with me just a moment here. Okay. All right, so it looks like what we have here are a number of different, uh, a lot more of our uh, people that are here today with us are really more of the uh, office administrators. Um, our office managers. We had a good number of pastors as well. So we're going to put up the next one also. Uh, the next poll will show, could show up here any second. And that's are you currently using Lutheran Service Builder? Okay, it looks like a good number of you all are, and we have uh, a decent number of people that aren't using it at all, but, and, and there are even uh, a few more that even are saying that, you know, no, I'm, I'm not using it at all either, but I, I do plan on subscribing soon. So we're certainly glad to have you all there. We've got one more poll we're gonna ask you here too. And that would be, what would you consider your Lutheran Service Builder skill level to be, those of you that are already using that? Great, those are all coming in. Looks like a good number. Um, honestly, most, uh, the, the highest percentage are people that are brand new. Um, and then we have some that are calling themselves, oh, I'm just kind of a novice. I'm not really that new. And then we have a, a, you know, a decent number of people that feel like that they're an intermediate level as well. So that's great because, I mean, we're, we're actually approaching that today um, because this is an introduction. Uh, so you're, you're in the right place and we're glad to have you here. So let's, uh, let me get back here and uh, you'll be able to see this. Bear with me just a moment as we get into all right so i just need to click on here make sure that i'm getting right here to the right spot so i'm sorry about that i think i'm having a little difficulty here with my screen but all right so what i'm going to do unfortunately it looks like that i'm having a little bit of difficulty with that um i'm going to just going to go ahead and talk about what we are what we're going to cover here today uh so Bear with me just a second. If I can get this back up here, I certainly will. Um, and I apologize for that. All right, so we're gonna look at, the, some of the things we're gonna look at here today is we're gonna look at how to plan a service. And then we're gonna look at um, selecting 
the elements that would go uh, be involved in a service. And then we're going to look at how do we edit the formatting and then also how do you export the content. Um, so as we're looking at here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead now and uh, pass this over to Ken and let him take it from here and he's going to get into the software and then we're going to be able to see that um see it so ken if you'll go ahead and take take that uh back here from me and i do apologize for the little bit of technical difficulty that i had with that so hopefully you'll see ken here and his screen here in just a moment Ken, I don't think they're hearing you, or at least I'm not hearing you. I was going to say, you got to love technology. <laughs> and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, as Dave said, my name is Ken Olemeyer, and I'm one of the senior marketing managers here at Concordia Publishing House. And you know, while Dave has been working with this software and working with Concordia Technology Services for years, I'm still relatively new here. I've been here a couple of years. Um, but that's really one of the reasons why I wanted to show you Lutheran Service Builder online today. And just to show you how simple and easy it is to, to, to work on your programs and your services like this. I mean, we've been listening to many of you for, for years uh, wanting to have this uh, web-based, cloud-based, Mac and PC-based type of software. So we're pretty excited about it. So I wanna show you just how easy it is to plan, to edit, to customize, and everything like that with your worship service material. You know, I've grown up Lutheran, and I've never at all thought about all the planning that goes into a service. You know, and I've been attending Lutheran services for decades. So Dave mentioned my role here at CPH. I have a, a great role here in that I get to go out and meet with pastors and administrators and music leaders and youth leaders and teachers and things like that and, and just talk about what's going on in their congregations and as i said i never really thought about all the work that goes into planning a service so as a lay person and i've got this opportunity let me take it thank you thank you for all the work that you do to put these services together for me i love our liturgy I love the songs, I love the, uh, the scripture, I love the order of things. And with Lutheran Service Builder Online now, uh, you can simplify how long it takes you to put that service together. And then really you can spend that extra time that you'll have uh, doing other ministries. So today we're gonna take a look at this from a 30,000 foot perspective. And I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to do this. And what are we gonna talk about today? Well, we won't be able to cover everything in, in the hour that we've got. Uh, we're just going to cover a lot of ground, but there's going to be things that you're going to probably want to dig in deeper and, and look at. And I noticed some of you had, some of you are already signed up for this. Some of you have done the free trial. I wanted to point you to our website, lutheranservicebuilder.com, and just again, show you that there is a free trial available. And as Dave mentioned, uh, if you sign up for that free trial, there's no credit card or anything like that. You have unlimited time to, to really kick the tires with this and see what you can do with it. Once you sign up, you'll see how easy it is. And if you haven't signed up, I, I recommend signing up and just trying it. As Dave said, you can't export, you can't print, you can't copy and paste. Uh, but you'll also, during that time, have access to the support network that's there. You know, ask us questions, see what we can do to help you on this. Uh, we're here for you in that regard. Oh, and one last thing to mention, uh, this added flexibility now of LSB being online is the same price point for you. There's no upcharge in this. Uh, so you're no longer required to stay at your desk or have that one computer like Dave mentioned to do this. You can build a team now uh, working through the software. So. Let's actually get started here. I'm going to flip over to my screen. I've already signed on to an account, and I'm going to take us right to the Lutheran Service Builder website. And you notice, again, those of you who already have an account or those who are just starting to get into it, your web address up here, app.lutheranservicebuilder.com. And here's your opening screen. This is when you sign in. You see the calendar section here, the calendar view. 
And it, it's where you start to plan your services. But let me just point out a couple of the different navigational tools. Uh, here at the cross is a home button that will always take you back to where you need to be. You see over here the search toolbar. And this is great. I can I can search a uh, specific verse. Let's say Matthew um, 7, verse 15. And searching for me, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing to inwardly or ravenous wolves. I, I can see that. I can see the different songs that uh, have that scripture attached to it. Um, I can see different readings and propers, etc. Let me click out of that. So the search tool is a real nice feature. Then next here is your administrative button or your gear or your your setting stage. And let me point out a couple of things here. Here's your calendar, your search, uh, your worship worship resources. If you have other worship resources set up, you can import files, your bulletin formats, presentation formats, and then you've got your account settings as well. Um, Couple different things I just want to point out here: bulletin formats and presentation formats. Um, this is where you can do some of the formatting for your bulletins. And you see here a default style. I'm going to click onto that. So that gives you your default, and you have some type of editing capabilities here. Um, we'll talk later when you start to export how you can really do even more editing on here. But this gives you some uh, some different editing opportunities either style or the layout or the content that's in there. And then just always remember to hit save on that. You can also go into the creative worship style or the large print. And I'm sure many of you who are using this, uh, just how convenient it is to be able to print out that large print bulletin, not doing extra work for it, so that you can help some of your senior members or those who might be a little digitally impaired. It's just great to have that option for us. But again, it's all the different things on here. Something too you might notice, the circle I down here is an information center. There's always a chance to go in and ask a question there. You can type in a, uh, a specific thing. So, um, how do I change font size? And it shows you a few options that pop up there. Or there's also the opportunity to send us a message. And if you send us a message, please tell us what you're asking about. You can provide some uh, as much detail as possible in there. Give us the priority. Uh, there's also the phone number available to you as well. So let me click out of that. And then, so let's just start planning a service. So let me go back to my calendar view. I'm going to click out of that. And it takes me right back to the calendar view. Uh, a couple other things on this view. You notice we've got our, our month right here. You can go back into the calendar or you can go into the future and i love this option too so you can be planning out services you know weeks and months in advance uh, so there you have that the other thing here too dave mentioned this the ability to start working together as teams you see this drop down box right here what this tells you to do or what it allows you to do i'm sorry is to have multiple different locations uh, and, and calendars for different uh, locations. Now, we only have one location, so the other ones aren't visible right here. But what a convenience that is as well. So the calendar view comes pre-populated with all the church holidays. And I'm into the busy week of Easter right there, and you see every day is, is set. Uh, and it has the church holidays, and it has uh, other ones that occur during the week or different things of that nature. Um, all the appropriate readings are attached with those as well, and that all comes from the Lutheran Service Book Altar Book. So it's just very nice to have any of these available to you right here. So I'm just going to click into uh, Lent 5, so April 7, and just show you that as well. So like I said, when you open it up, all the propers are there. So you see the suggested readings for the day. Uh, are displayed Old Testament, Psalm, Epistle, uh, Epistle, Gospel. So you have some different choices, the Intuit, the Collect of the Day, the Gradual, the Verse. So all of that is available to you. And one thing that's great about this too, as Dave mentioned, all the copyright is taken care of in there. So you don't have to worry about that. So, all right, so you can only create or edit events on Dave, I'm going to click that. 
back. So you can only create or edit events on uh, either current dates or future dates. Now you can go back and still view uh, material in previous dates, but you wouldn't be able to edit any of those. So if I click into Third Sunday and Epiphany, I have all this, but it doesn't allow me to make any edits at that point. Uh, it's nice though to have that again as re as reference, and sometimes you know if you have saved those particular days, just to be able to pull them back when it comes time to do it again. The other thing that's great on here too, and I'm going to go a little future, is you can also plan or create a custom event by clicking on any date. So let's say on the 26th of April, uh, you have something that has occurred. You have the ability to change your date from there. You have the holiday itself, or you can name it. But let's say, uh, whoop, I'm sorry, I just lost that. So let me click on that. Let me just say, instead of that, it is a funeral service. Clicking too soon. There we go. Let's say it's a funeral service. One of your members has passed away and you've got to plan this funeral service. Just click plan the service, and then you see everything will pull up that is in regards to a uh, funeral service with the propers that are around there as well. A lot of times too, if you go back into your, your calendar view, and let's say you have a number of similar day, uh, events planned on that particular day, and it just gets too long, you might see a little triangle there. That is just a sign to uh, drop down and you'll see more uh, of those things. So let's start planning and creating a custom service right now. As we said, there are two ways to do this, either click on one of the holidays or click on one, uh, just a date, and then start it yourself and customize it that way. But let's do that. Let's choose a date and let's do, well, I'm gonna say two things here too, as you see the calendar view. You notice how some of my dates are bold right there, and then others are not bold. The bold calendar view dates are ones that you've already started planning a service on. Uh, if, if you haven't planned one, so let's say I want to do my Easter sunrise service. I've already done started my uh, Easter day service, but let's say I want to do Easter sunrise. So I'm going to start on there. All right, so we choose the date, we choose our service. It pops up for us, all the propers are there. Uh, we see everything there. Now, all I have to do is click over, and I'm just scrolling down to again, show you that everything is included there. Now, all I need to do is click over to plan this service. And there's my service plan. And you see the propers and the service plan and any number, we can add any number of readings or any number of hymns. We can add uh, special notes. We can add additional rights. We can do all of that, but you still can only do it for one order of service. So once we have our order of service selected, uh, everything will if, just start filling in for us. So uh, here's my reading, but I have other readings I can select from as well. So there might be other suggestions on this side. My Psalm, my uh, epistle, my gospel reading. Now I wanna add some hymns. So I click on the add hymn bar and you see it opens up and you see on the right side of the screen, all the suggested hymns add up or come up automatically. So I'm gonna use my hymn of the day and I just click on it. And then I add another one. So another line drops down and let's see, I must do another couple here. I know my redeemer lives. Um, Jesus lives, the victory is won. Let me add one more in there. He is a risen, glorious word. Okay, so I've added some hymns into there. Now my order of the service right now is empty. So I'm going to select the order of the service that I want to use. And we have the different divine service options here for you. Daily offices, other services, uh, seasonal services, uh, prayer rites, daily prayer for individuals and families. And it goes on and on down here, uh, which is just very convenient for you having the whole author book right here online from wherever you want to be doing this. So let's just take divine service setting one. So I'm going to click on that. So I've got my divine service setting one. Um, busy ser or service like this, let's say if I did want to include a, a baptism 
or some other types of services or rights, I would have that available to me right here. And then let's say I wanted to add some special notes. Maybe it's an anniversary or some other special prayers or things of that nature, and you wanted to add the notes. So the other two things down here too, and I'm just kind of looking over my screen, change name, date, or holiday. You can click on that and then change it to whatever uh, specific date or holiday you'd like. Uh, you can also delete this after you've done it as well. But let's go ahead and keep moving forward and uh, click then into prepare bulletin. So now we're going to really start moving this forward for us and uh, preparing the bulletin. Okay. So my bulletin. I've got my readings. Oh. Pardon me. Repair bulletin. I'm just going to re refresh just to be sure. Ah, here we go. Now it's loading up the service for me. Okay. So we pulled all that material together and I'm starting to work through my bulletin now. Uh, now, again, as I said, there's some limitations you have on the editing of this and that. But we find that a lot of times when you export it, uh, you can get it into a word processor and then really, really fine tune it to fit your bulletin styles themselves. Uh, but the first thing you notice here is a toolbar. And, uh, you know, this changes depending on what element of the service you're getting into. So. If I click into my hymn of invocation, uh, okay, there were my hymns and the service plan. So let's just say right off the bat, Jesus wins, the victories won. We are able to put that in there. Uh, what a great hymn. Uh, and then I can look at the captioning of it. I want to keep my captioning. I can look at my text, but I want to also include the melody. I'm one of these guys who really likes to see the notes uh, when I'm singing as well. And I can do that, and then I just click out. And that's included then in my bulletin, how easy that is for us. Um, you can do some different edits as well. Oop, I can go back in and edit my bulletin format. Let's say I wanted to try a different bulletin format rather than what the one that I had already selected. I can easily do that. But I'm going to click back out. So there I am back again on this. Um, and again, you notice this changes depending on what part element that I'm using uh, in here as well. I can also go in very easily and change a particular section if I want to include a prayer or a collect uh, from a different divine service, I can do that as well. And let's just see here. Now also notice this, notice the blue bar that I have here to the, to the left. If I click down on that, that gives me a couple different choices. So I can choose which one of these I want to include in there. So I'm going to actually go with the psalm and do that. And again, just click off of that. Oops. Click off of that. And now that's included in there. Uh, and again, you see this changes depending on what section or what element I go to. Lastly, I want to come back up into this. and. Uh, just get back to that. Now, you see my export uh, bar. This is where we can export our bulletin then, and we can export it as a Microsoft Word document or a rich text format document or even an HTML document. And as I said, all you do is click on that. Uh, I've got the font included. There will be a font that you might need. And there it is down there at the bottom. And I click on here. I'm going to drag my Word up. I'm going to drag my Word doc over yeah it's opened up in a word document on my other screen and if i can drag it i will there we go so again it shows you that it's a word document that you can then go in and do some additional editing and some additional formatting and we just find that it can be a lot easier for you sometimes 
from here, then you can also save it as a PDF or save it, uh, whatever works best for you when you're doing your printing and such. Now, there's some other things that we can do as far as our service here. I'm gonna move over to the Insert tab. And this is where you can add different elements as well into your, into your uh, service and really start to customize it. So to use, first we uh, select the part of the element that we want to add. Um, and you see how it just hovers right over there. So I'm gonna click into that. And this allows me to, again, I have two different choices there. So I'm going to pick that one. And then I can also come back through and decide which divine service setting I want. Um, and do this, the search menu will also be in here too. So if there's something I wanna search for and add, I can do that. And that gives me some available options as well. So options like hymns or a hymn of praise or creed, you know, it allows us to choose one of the multiple elements that can be used in the service. And that's what some of these are showing here. These appear as the blue brackets. So let's say we've done through this, we, we've got our service to where we want it. I think I still wanna add a couple more of my songs in here. My Old Testament reading, my Psalms, my Epistle, my Alleluia and verse, hymn of the day. Let's say I actually want to add my hymn of the day, and that was Awake, O oh My Heart with Gladness. I've added that. Again, I like to have melody lines put in there, so I click there. And we've gone through all of this, and we've developed our, our particular worship service for that day. So the next thing to do is to export it. And we've shown you how easy that is by just clicking the export button there. And as I said, that's when you can really start to do some editing into your program and make it fit your bulletins and just open up a word processor and do it that way. So that is as simple as it is in this real brief overview to develop a worship service. Uh, it, it is all pretty much right there for you. Uh, you and your teams can work together on it. Uh, you can start planning out months in advance. Uh, it allows uh, some flexibility for you too. If you want to change up a couple of the different things from the divine service, you can do that. Now, let's go back to our service view though. And I'm gonna click on that. And I, that takes me back to my calendar view. I'm back to my Easter day service. That was gonna be my Easter sunrise service. And let's try to prepare some slides for this. We know that a lot of churches now are using the slides uh, to show and project. Uh, this is very easy to prepare a slide presentation as well. So again, I go back into this view. I have my prepare bulletin. Now I have my prepare presentation. I just click on that. It is going to load my service up and it's loading it up as PowerPoint slides my hymns, so I'm in my invocation there. Uh, again, it allows me to do some different options at the top here to edit, um, to go in and, and do some things, to add some different elements. I can go in and add prayers. I can add, you know, customized prayers for, for our congregation. I go back though, I'm gonna click out of that. And it's very easy for us to go in and make some changes and uh, do some different things. There are also, and if I go into my document, I can look at this, I can look at uh, just a basic presentation format, which again, you can then import into your uh, PowerPoint and take a look at it. Or I have some other options as far as some designs and things of that nature. Um, Again, a lot of this gives you flexibility to bring the material in so you're not having to retype it all. If you have a particular style or a particular format or something that works best for your church, it allows you to do that. Now I'm going to go back there and I'm going to click back into my service. Now let's, let's add some music. And this, I, I love the idea that you can actually build a playlist in here. In fact, uh, I was visiting a pastor one time in Iowa 
and we were talking, he was very, very familiar with uh, the online LSP. He loved the fact that now he could do it. He was a Mac guy. So he loved the fact that he was able to do this with his Mac in a laptop while he's at a coffee shop or things like this. But they didn't have an organist. And he was so adept at this and so good at it that he would embed different things into his PowerPoint slides uh, because they had the whole service on a PowerPoint screen. And he was able to take the music portion of it and have the music embedded and played throughout the service. And he said he got so good at it, the people used to come up to him afterwards and completely serious, say, boy, I really like the new organist we have now. And uh, so it, those type of things can be done. And here is where you do it. You go prepare playlist. We click on that. And you notice here, I have areas where there's music uh, into our service. And again, I love the music in the Lutheran service. And here is where you can put all of this in and you can hear a snippet. I'm hoping you can hear that. But it plays for you. I can also see it here. I can select maybe a different hymn that I want to do. I have all of my information on it, all my authors, my copyrights, the melody, uh, maybe some related uh, topics or related scripture that go with it. So all of that is there for me, or I can just do it as a text document. So I'm gonna select the hymn of invocation that I had there. I selected it. Oh, I'm and select that. That's actually the one I want. Okay, then I'm going to go down to the Curie. Again, it, it plays for us. Let me select that. Select those. Oh, so what I need to do is go up here actually and hit include. So I'm including that. And in my Curie, I want to include that into my service. My glory and excelsis, I've got two different ones. So I'm gonna use this as the feast. And again, have the ability to listen to that as well. So I'll click on that, I'm gonna include that. Uh, Alleluia in verse, Lord to whom shall we go, our holy gospel. Include that as well, the music that's played there. Maybe I need some music to play during the offertory. I'm going to include that as well. And then when you get done with all of that, you know, when you've added everything in there that you need, I'm going to scroll back up to the top document. And I'm going to export this. And you see that this gets exported as a zip compressed MP3 file. So you'll have this MP3 playlist that you'll just download and uh, have that available to you. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my screen to be right. So that'll be uh, available to you as well. So I've downloaded that and saved it. One last thing too, we mentioned uh, being mobile access. What does that really mean for us? Well. Again, because now you can use this software in a tablet form or in a uh, uh, web-based. Uh, what it really means is that as you move your, and I'm having some problems with my screen as well, but we'll reload that. As you, as you move this around to different formats, your, to your iPad or to your phone or to your web, as you change your browser, uh, it will automatically move with it so uh, that's just convenient again if you're trying to use multiple sources uh, to, to look at all this and to plan so as i'm moving this around this is mobile responsive and it just makes it so much more convenient for us so as dave said uh you know there's some this is just a brief overview we're looking at this from thirty thousand feet i hope that i've just given you the taste enough right now to just see how simple this is to start planning services. Uh, again, just click into a date, your propers are there. Uh, we say plan this service. We decide, okay, these are the readings I wanna do. Or maybe I wanna add a reading. Additional readings pop up there. 
hymns. I want to add hymns. They're all right there for you. I just click and add. My order of service, all of my divine settings are right there for you. My daily offices, et cetera. Additional rights, everything's right there for you. A place to put notes. So it's all right there. And as I said, there's a whole lot that you can do with Lutheran Service Builder. And, and we just started scratching the surface here. Um, you know, what's great about this is through this software, you can provide your church with a properly designed, and there's no pun intended there, but a properly designed, easy to develop, uh, simple service bulletin in, in really just a matter of minutes. And what does that allow? That allows, that frees you up and allows you to do more ministry that you want to be doing, not being tied to your laptop or not being tied to your desktop and putting the service together. So Dave and I are going to be offering more of these type of seminars and more of these type of conversations uh, and digging deeper into the software. So be looking for additional announcements from us at times. And again, we thank you all for attending. I know this is a very busy, busy time period with Lent and with Easter coming up. Uh, that, that taking you know 40 minutes out it can be a big ch a chunk of time for you. So we appreciate that. And if we can ever be of assistance to you, I mean, if you have anything, you, you don't, questions, concerns, new ideas, you know, a lot of this moving to a cloud-based service came from ideas and from comments that we heard from you. So if you've got additional ideas, please let us know. And our team of developers will continue to work on those type of things. Um, any one of our support staff with Concordia Technology Services is here to help with you as well. And I'm gonna switch it back over to Dave and see if there are any specific questions that we might have. Uh, if not, we may even end a little bit early today. For, for many of us, uh, it is opening day, and you may have a team that you're watching today. So uh, we appreciate you coming out. We pray for blessings on your Lenten and Easter preparation. I appreciate the time, and I'm going to hand it back to Dave. And sure. Let's see here, Dave. I'm going to actually have you, I'm going to change you back to presenter. Okay. That sounds fine. All right. So hopefully on your screen, you'll see um, where it says start a free trial at lutheranservicebuilder.com. We certainly want to encourage you, if you haven't already started a free trial, to to jump on, on uh, online and start that up today. So it is super easy to do and it will allow you to do anything and everything that you saw Ken uh, do today. So you can play around with it. You really can't break the software. Don't worry about that. Even for those of you that do have it, you can't break anything. Um, and, and it's just so easy to do this. Um, so we are glad that you joined us here today. Um, also, for those of you that do have Lutheran Service Builder already and that you are saying, well, we do have the older version uh, and it is the Windows PC based software. But, yeah, we would definitely like to move to this. I think this would assist us. Um, then you will need to schedule a time. So what you're going to need to do is go to this website here um, and sign up for a, uh, a time to get things switched over. Now, if you already have a paid subscription, and let's say your subscription runs through June, uh, there's there's no cost for you to switch over from the desktop version to the web-based version. All you need to do is make an appointment. Uh, when your subscription renews, it's gonna renew at the same price. So there's no increase for those of you that already have the, uh, the installed version of Lutheran Service Builder. So I hope that that might answer a question for you as well. Um, so you can, when you do that, you'll schedule a conversation with us and we'll just kind of go over with you, um, in regards to what it's going to take. There's a, you know, certainly there's a new license agreement that every church will need to sign when you're switching over to the online Lutheran service builder. Um, but again, it's really not a big deal. It's just going to state on there what your subscription is if we do if you have the lutheran service builder and the hymn license and they happen to renew at different dates then we'll just need to align your subscription um, some do have those different dates of subscriptions and some don't um, but we can certainly align those and then now everything will 
renew at the same license uh, subscription year. Uh, and then we just simply after that, we'll turn on your access into the new builder. It's super easy. And for those of you against making that switch over, you might be wondering, well, I've got a lot of past services and I sure would like to look at what we did last year for this special service. Well, you when you transition from the desktop to the online version, it will bring over your history. So uh, that's another great thing about the uh, the new builder is that you'll be able to bring over the history of your old and past services uh, into the new builder. And then um, we'll just send you instructions on how to do that. So there you'll have, really it's about only a four step process and it really is simple. You can certainly give us a call if you have any questions uh, regarding that. Um, and I hope that we've been able to answer some of your questions and just give you a little broader, uh, a brief overview of everything uh, in regards to the new Lutheran Service Builder. I shouldn't say everything, but really just a good overview um, of how to create worship services in the new Lutheran Service Builder. So again, my information here is on the screen uh, and you can feel free to contact me. That little help system uh, is a perfect place. If you need assistance, you really need to probably get in touch with those support team members uh, for the Lutheran Service Builder support team because they are the ones that can help you with any questions for those of you that already have a subscription. That little I in the lower right hand corner will allow you to be able to send in your request for help um, and or get the 800 number to call. It's a different 800 number than the number that you'll see here on the screen today. Um, but you'll be able to give them a call. And that same help area is where you can put in there a suggestion for us uh, that helps us to continue to build the software based upon the needs of the churches that we serve. So their, their number again and their contact information for our software support team is on your screen now. So I hope that will be of assistance for those of you that already have it. Um, I'm going to check to see if there's any any additional questions that you may have submitted here. Um, I know that we had a few before. Let me double check that and see if we've got any more that might have just come in. And while Dave's looking at that, I will say too, if, if we don't have the answer to your question now, we'll be able to find the answer out for you and get it back to you. So by all means, if, if something comes up later today and you're thinking about it, just send us an email. Send us an email with a question and just say, hey guys, I was thinking about this. What do you know? And then we'll get with the experts who would be able to answer that for you. All right, I'm gonna answer just a, a question or two that did come up here. Um, there was a question that says, well, how much is a copyright license for producing hymns on paper or basically printing or exporting them out? All of that is dependent upon what is the size of your congregation? Uh, the pricing is on the LutheranServiceBuilder.com website. You'll just click on pricing, and then when you're on the pricing page, click on the uh, hymn license, and that will tell you what that is. So it is based upon the size of the congregation, and you'll be able to see that there. It starts off with, the, you know, if you're un worshiping under an average attendance of 200, I believe that's $75 a year. So it's uh, it's not it's not very much to be able to have that option, and then once you have that, hymn license, do you have full copyright permission to be able to um, export, print, um, if you're doing a, you know, basically projecting your order of service and the hymns on a screen, it gives you copyright permission for that. All right, so let's check out, there's another question here. All right, so you, there's a question here about, we have multiple people that might be working on a service, um, and how do we keep one person, uh, a person from changing um, something on a worship service, and then maybe they shouldn't have changed something? Um, really, that's gonna be an, an in-house type of debate there for you, because what will happen is, if you don't want somebody to be able to 
to have access to your Lutheran Service Builder online, then you merely do not invite them into your account. If you do invite them into the account, then they do have editorial rights and they will be able to um, add or change content on a service. So that can be something that uh, we can put in here and I will, I will actually submit that as a suggestion though to have a user to be able to uh, have access to view only and not to make edits. But right now, anybody that you give access to will have the rights to be able to edit or change any of the content on a worship service. So you'll just need to make sure that um, each of you are communicating, um, but the, the two or the three or more of you can get in there and work together and make changes as needed. So I think that is all really the questions that we have. I think I answered a few more of them uh, online as they came in during the presentation. So if there's no other question that comes in here within the next 10 seconds, um, I want to say thank you so much. And I'll, let's see, I'll get my picture up here again. So I just want to say thank you so much for attending and taking your time out to watch this overview for the Lutheran Service Builder. And uh, just want to say God's blessings to you as you serve his people. And as we service you, we hope that this, this software will be a great benefit for you and give you more time to do other things related to ministry that you need to do. So thanks again for this opportunity to share with you. And uh, everyone, have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone.